The Australian T visual approach system has been developed to provide positive approach slope guidance by the use of visual signals. By means of the two groups of lights you can see, one on either side of the runway, the pilot of an aircraft approaching to land may ascertain his position with respect to the optimum approach slope. In simulating one of these two groups, we now see the wing bar lights which are seen by a pilot when he is on the correct approach slope. When a pilot is below the optimum approach slope, he will see one, two, or three lights in a T pattern which command him to fly up. It is this pattern which identifies the system as a T system. As the aircraft closes with the correct approach slope, the pilot loses lights in the fly up leg. If he then rises higher than the approach slope, he will see the one, two, or three light command of the fly down signal as an inverted T. The progressive disappearance of lights in the vertical leg of the T provides a clear indication of flight towards the correct visual approach slope and shows the rate of closure with the approach slope. When all leg lights have disappeared, and only those forming the wing bar are visible, the T system is displaying the on-slope signal. Minor deviations above or below the correct approach slope immediately become obvious as a result of the appearance of lights in the leg of the T. If a pilot deviates too far below the approach slope, in addition to the white light signals, a warning indication is provided. At this low angle, the light units progressively change color to produce a red, gross undershoot signal. Of the 20 light units required to provide the pattern, eight form the wing bars. Six more on each side are located in longitudinal lines parallel to the runway. Ten units are required on one side of the runway. Light units are constructed of lightweight fiberglass with ribs to prevent reflection of the sun. The basic light unit has three variations. The fly-up unit, the fly-down unit, and bar units. The front lid is removed from this fly-up unit for maintenance purposes, but it is not fitted to a fly-down unit or a bar unit. The service cover is removed in order to gain access to the lamp assembly for maintenance purposes. The central lid is not normally removed unless a complete cleaning program is being undertaken. Inside the rear of the light unit, are mounted the lamp assembly and the rear light control blade, while at the front is another light control blade. The lamp assembly consists of two lamps for use by night and four lamps for use by day. Each lamp is capable of individual adjustment. The light from the lamps passes through the aperture of the rear control blade, the working edges of each aperture providing the cutoff required to produce a sharp signal. The baffles prevent internal reflections. All blades consist of either cut-off edges or red filters, depending upon the function of the unit. And at each end of each blade are posts upon which the adjusting level may be mounted. The dimension from the top of the post to the cut-off edge of the blade is very accurately controlled during manufacture. By placing the level upon the top of the blade post, and adjusting the nut at the rear, the unit is leveled. Leveling the unit places the signal at the desired angle. Threaded support rods connect the light unit to the mountings, which are bolted to the concrete foundation. In order that the bar remains horizontal, in spite of a sloping flight strip, it is necessary to mount some units on pillars, which vary in length depending upon the slope of the terrain.
The plastic mountings are designed to fracture when the unit is hit by a vehicle or an aircraft. Here, an aircraft is shown well above the approach slope. Consider this as an instrument approach, when a glide slope indicator would show the pointer well below the center mark, thus providing the pilot with a fly-down command, which is similar in form and sensitivity to the three-dot inverted T signal received from the T visual approach system in the same position. In this position, the aircraft is closer to the correct glide slope, the pointer indicating a reducing displacement, while a clear indication of flight towards the correct approach slope is shown by the T-visual approach system. As the aircraft closes with the glide slope, the pointer shows no displacement, and the T-system shows the on-slope signal. When the aircraft is below the glide slope, the pointer is above the center mark, and a two-dot fly-up T is also seen. If an aircraft deviates too far below the approach slope, a red gross undershoot signal will be seen. At this lower angle, the pointer of the glide slope indicator is seen above the center mark, forming a T and providing the same fly-up command as a full fly-up T. Rising again, the pilot will observe the on-slope signal. The graphic display just shown is now demonstrated on this flight, commencing with the fly-down signal. A clear indication of flight towards the visual approach slope and the rate of closure are determined by the progressive disappearance of the leg lights. When the aircraft is displaced slightly below the angle at which all three white lights of the fly-up signal are first seen, the symbolic display changes to all red to warn that the aircraft is in the gross undershoot area. This is the only time a color other than white is displayed. The concept that red should be used to signify only a condition of danger or distress is accepted worldwide. Rising again, the white fly-up signal will be seen. The visual on-slope signal is displayed when only a set of wing bar lights is visible. The International Civil Aviation Organization adopted the T-visual approach system as a standard in 1971. On an approach from base leg, the T-visual approach system shows a full fly-up T. The pilot adjusts his flight path as he intercepts the correct approach slope. The center light of the wing bar has been omitted as a normal feature of the system to give prominence to the first light of each leg above and below the wing bar. The lights which appear and disappear above and below the wing bar are seen here to indicate a trend relative to the approach slope. This trend is immediately obvious and is a command to the pilot to make the necessary corrections. Guidance is indicated as soon as the aircraft deviates above or below the correct approach slope by the immediate appearance of an additional light. In the normal approach, the pilot's eyes should pass over threshold at approximately 14 meters, allowing adequate clearance for the wheels of the aircraft. With larger aircraft, particularly those referred to as long-bodied aircraft, it is necessary for the pilot to fly a higher than normal slope. With this system, it is considered quite satisfactory for the pilot to hold an indication of between one dot fly down and two dots fly down. This will provide the increase in height at the threshold, 
which is necessary for an aircraft of this type. Interpretation of position by symbolic means is more accurate and less time-consuming than interpretation of varying brilliancy or change of color. Interpretation of color or brilliancy is not a requirement of the T visual approach system. A Boeing 747 holding an indication of between one dot and two dots fly down will pass across the threshold with the pilot's eye between 17 meters and 22 meters above the threshold, the average height being 19 meters, thus providing adequate clearance between the aircraft wheels and the threshold. The T system provides visual approach slope guidance from the point where the pilot makes visual contact which is normally greater than eight kilometers from touchdown, either by day or night. The system continues to provide guidance until shortly before the aircraft arrives over the threshold. On this normal approach, it will be seen that at no time does the pilot see a full dot above or below the on-slope signal. This indicates that he is holding the desired approach slope to within a distance of a meter or two. During evaluation of this system, the flight paths of a number of aircraft in actual service were measured, and statistics showed that the T-visual approach system was making a material contribution to the safety of each landing.